Chris Maddox for the crossover alongside Rowan Nedcardi and Howard Beck. Guys, break up the Knicks for just the third time in the last 20 years. The New York Knicks have a winning record after just 35 games. As we approach the All-Star break, Rohan, do you believe that this Knicks success is sustainable? You know, Chris, I love this question because I think it's going to come down to your definition of sustainable in this context. Do I think the Knicks can make the playoffs this season, finish in the top 10 of the East? Yeah, I absolutely do. Listen, it's a weird pandemic season. Uh, they have capable veterans on the team and Derrick Rose, uh, Julius Randle, Alfred Clayton's played well. Uh, you know, I, do I think that they can keep up what they've done this season? Yes, I absolutely do. Tibbs has always proven to be a, a pretty good regular season coach when he has some guys uh, th that he likes around him. Uh, Todd Gibson's on this team, too. Do I think that this is long-term sustainable? That's really the question here, and that's kind of, the me to me, the underlying story of this Knicks season. It's great that they're going to make the playoffs. I'm genuinely happy for their fans. There's something to be said about putting a competent NBA product on the floor, which the Knicks have not done, as you said, for largely the last two decades. So I, I don't want to rain on the parade here. But what is the long-term plan? When you bring in a Derrick Rose and he's taking away some minutes from Emmanuel quickly, uh, is that the right move? Is Julius Randle someone you're going to sign to a long-term max deal and make the focal point of your franchise? Is that what you want? Obviously, he's had a great year making his first All-Star team. So those are the questions I'm asking about the Knicks. It's more, is this sustainable long-term? That's when I start to get skeptical. Uh, but do I think they're going to finish the season strong and make the playoffs? Yes, absolutely. So here's what's sustainable. The Knicks are fun, they're relevant, and they're respectable. And those three things are absolutely sustainable wherever they finish in the standings. Here's what's also sustainable. They're the number two defense in the league under Tom Thibodeau. And while I don't necessarily believe that they will finish the season as the second best defense in the NBA, they're going to stay in the top 10. And defense will keep them in a lot of games. It will make them competitive. It will keep them in the playoff chase. But if sustainable, if the question is about, are they really this good? You can't look at the standings. Yeah, they're fourth in the West, but they're a game over 500. They would be, or excuse me, they're fourth in the East. They would be ninth in the West with their record. So some of this is the forgiveness of being in the Eastern Conference. And a lot of this is the fact that there's still a jumble going on there. Teams behind them, Miami, Boston, Toronto, we all know are better teams than the Knicks. They'll finish ahead of the Knicks. That leaves the Knicks now scrambling for that eighth spot if you want a guaranteed uh, you know, top eight finish as sustainability. You're scrambling along with Indiana, Chicago, Atlanta, Charlotte, maybe even Washington. So there's going to be a battle for that eighth spot or eighth, ninth, tenth, if you want to consider the play-in games. And that's really where they're probably going to end up. If you look at the uh, the algorithms out there, the, the algorithms by like 538 blog or ESPN, they've got them somewhere between like 12 and 24%, 30%, I think, maybe to make the playoffs. So... The schedule is going to come into play, too, because those algorithms are, are factoring that in. And the Knicks, by the way, have a brutal finish to the schedule in May. A lot of road games and a lot of games against the top teams in the league. Yeah, look, I'm not going to declare the Knicks contenders here because, as you point out, Howard, I mean, it's a very precarious position that they're in. By the time some people watch this video, the Knicks could be in 10th. That's how close it is between them and the 10 seed Bulls in the standing. So a lot of things can change over a matter of just a couple of games. But the defense that you mentioned is what matters here. And I would disagree, Howard. I think that they can finish as a top five level defense. I think they can be that good because Tom Thibodeau is that good a defensive coach. And basically everywhere he's gone, except for a couple of seasons in Minnesota, they have been a high level defensive team. And I've seen enough of a sample size to believe this Knicks team can be a great defensive team and that they, that can mask some of their offensive uh, liabilities. Now, Rohan, you were somehow concerned about the Knicks' long-term plan. What are you talking about? Julius Randle's under contract for next season. You don't have to worry about a long-term deal with him for another, like, 18 months down the line. they got a bunch of young players in that mix under contract. This is the most functional Knicks salary cap that we have seen since like the mid 90s, like beyond what they're doing on the court, which is exceptional for what they're doing right now. And Tom Thibodeau, to me, is the coach of the year. Leon Rose has kept this team in position to have flexibility going forward. And that's a big part of a master plan. 
I don't disagree, Chris. I'm just saying that at some point over those next 18 months, they're going to have to ask themselves the question, you know, is Randall a guy that we want to build around? Are we seeing enough from our young players? They were closing a game with Derrick Rose, Todd Gibson, and Julius Randall uh, last week. That really happened in 2021. Uh, you know, I respect Tibbs for doing whatever it takes to win. Uh, you mentioned some of those young guys under contract. They have intriguing players there quickly, has been really good. I just don't even think they're they're playing those guys enough at times uh, because of the way Tibbs relies on his veterans. So it, it's not so much that I'm, I'm, I'm casting doubt uh, on the master plan. It, it's more so are, are they really willing to stick to it uh, when push comes to shove and build around those young guys as opposed to just getting all the veterans that Tibbs wants in there. So uh, that that would be my concern. I, I, I understand that Leon Rose has done a good job in building a winning culture uh, goes a long way in building long-term success here. Uh, but Tibbs, historically, he's, he's not been the kind of coach who, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, I think is always, you know, rosy about the big picture, aware of the big picture. Uh, I, I'm not saying that's hurting the Knicks, but, but it's something to keep an eye on, I think, over the next three or four years. You have to really hate the Knicks to find clouds on this day here for New York. Good salary cap. I thought Beck was the one that hated the Knicks. Isn't that the way it works, Beck? I mean, that's what's been uh, alleged on Twitter. And, I mean, Twitter's never wrong, right? <laughs> never wrong. I think the Knicks, I think they're in a good position on the court and a better position off because of the flexibility they have. If they prove that they're a relevant team, uh, you know, that's the franchise that can turn itself around very quickly. For more, check us out over at SI.com.